want to share a message with you, a very important one I've learned throughout my own journey, and that's that rejection is a blessing. I know you may be scratching your heads. We always see rejection as a bad thing, but rejection is a blessing. It is God's protection to make sure we find our path in this life. And I have a lot of experience with it. In fact, many of the greatest, most beautiful blessings in my life are the result of rejection. And, and I wanna show you a whole pile of rejection right here. Uh, these are the return receipts from about two dozen TV stations where I first was uh, sending my resume reel while I was still in college in hopes of getting my first television news job. Let's see, I sent it to a TV station in Baton Rouge, another one in Macon, Georgia, Let's see, another one in Baton Rouge, um, one in Tallahassee where I was in school, um, several, another one in, in, in North Carolina. And again, I sent out nearly two dozen of these reels. I had a 4.0 in FAMU School of Journalism. I had won several awards, so I really thought coming out of college, you know what, I have what it takes. I'm gonna get hired very soon. I wanted to have my first job as I walked across the stage at graduation, but I didn't get a call back from any of these. And, and I was devastated. You know, I felt here I was someone who had worked really hard in school all my life for my big dream of being a television news reporter. And I was worried that it wouldn't come to pass. So I did a lot of praying and I asked God like, okay, God, what, what am I missing? And he humbled me. He said, listen, you need to go back to your mentors. You need to ask for help and guidance. And I went back to WDSU in New Orleans, a TV station where I interned the semester before I graduated. And I was humble. I said, uh, hey guys, I need help. I'm not finding anyone to hire me. And there was a man there. He was an executive producer. He was getting ready to leave to start a new station in Jackson, Mississippi. He said, let me take a look at your reel and I'll get back to you. Uh, well, in the uh, days and weeks from that time, as I was hoping and praying uh, that someone would hire me, I unfortunately uh, leaned on unhealthy coping mechanisms. I, I, I went to what I like to call a chocolate covered painkillers. Essentially those chocolate covered peanuts that you find in Walgreens that are like 99 cents. Um, and unfortunately I, I binge ate those in, in moments of severe anxiety, wondering, if I was good enough, wondering if I really had what it took to live out my dream. So all the while I was worrying, wondering if, if God was gonna grant my heart's desires, I didn't know he was working behind the scenes. And about a month later, I got a phone call that I got my first job, offered my first TV reporting job in Jackson, Mississippi, just three hours away from my hometown in New Orleans. and I breathed the sigh of relief and I was so grateful. And I was in Jackson, Mississippi for about three years working really hard as, as an investigative reporter when all of a sudden my dream job in New Orleans came open at the CBS affiliate there, one of the number one stations in the country. I said, oh my God, is this it? Got called in for an interview. I'm like, all right, Jesus, this is it. Interview went well. They were looking for someone with my skills, looking for someone from the area. I'm like, I grew up in New Orleans and my last name is New Orleans, Larche. So after I left the interview, I was really excited and really, really thought that this was going to be my opportunity. A few days went by, a few weeks went, went by, and I learned that someone else got the job. I was devastated. I, I, I didn't know where to turn. I didn't know what to do. I, I thought my, my dream was slipping away right from under me. And then a, a few days after I found out I didn't get my big dream job in New Orleans, I got a call from a 757 area code. I didn't even know where that was. And I'm thinking, wait, did I apply for a job somewhere? And I, and I just didn't remember. And it was Channel 3, News 3. The news director at the time gave me a call. Some of my mentors shared my work with the station and they flew me up for an interview. And I started at News 3 in the fall of 2010, this year marking 10 years at Channel 3. You know, I was nervous about coming here. I, I had been rejected from what I thought was my dream job. 
God led me to Virginia, but at first I, I didn't know why. And over the last 10 years, God has unfolded my journey in such a beautiful way that he showed me that rejection is a blessing. Since being here, I was able to step foot on my own wellness journey. I was able to start therapy that helped me unravel my unhealthy relationship with food. And over the course of several years, I was blessed to lose 100 pounds. It was about what the weight represented, and that was an unhealthy relationship with food, and that was trying to mask anxiety. Therapy was a huge driver in that. So that was one of the reasons God brought me here, and I'm so grateful for that. Another way rejection was a blessing that led me here to Hampton Roads was that I was able to grow in my career. I've been anchor of News 3 this morning for the past six years, been at the station for 10, and have really been able to tell some meaningful stories that I hope have changed people's lives for the better. And the other blessing that happened from coming to Virginia, I met my fine husband. We celebrated four years of marriage. So grateful to be Mrs. Washington. He's an incredible man, an incredible partner, my very best friend. And I'm so grateful that God allowed our paths to cross, but that would not have happened without the blessing of rejection. And, and so as I talk about that, you know, these things are all beautiful to say now, how incredibly God has blessed me because I was rejected from something I thought I wanted, but he was pushing me in the direction of all of my hopes and dreams actually above and beyond what I imagined. So that sounds great now, but when you are in the shadows of rejection, it doesn't feel great at the time. It's very easy to lose hope. So I want to share with you three keys to thriving in rejection. The first key is do not allow rejection to make you doubt God's plan for your life. Jeremiah 29 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans for hope and a future. You have to trust that God has your back even when you don't see him working. So again, trust that God knows exactly what he's doing with your life. The second way to thrive in rejection is use your waiting time in a positive way. I go back to how I was self-medicating my binge eating um, during that time between college and when I got hired for my first job. And you know that was a destructive way of spending my time, but use your waiting time wisely. Put your energy into a positive thing, if that's meditating, if it's volunteering, if it's helping someone else. And remember Galatians 6, 9 with this, it says, let us not become weary in well-doing for at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Put that nervous energy to use in a positive way. And the third way to thrive in the face of rejection is express gratitude in the face of uncertainty. Express gratitude. Philippians 4, 6 says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Be grateful in everything you have at this moment right now. You can find something to be grateful, no matter how dark it may seem, no matter how confused you may be about where God is leading you, what step is next. Did you wake up this morning? Do you have breath in your lungs? These are all things to be grateful for. And as Oprah Winfrey said, when you focus on the good, it will expand, paraphrasing there. And I want to share a little bit about focusing on the good. There was a moment uh, before I was promoted to the morning show where I was considering uh, where my career was going at News 3. I didn't know if I needed to stay there in my current role at the time as a reporter. Did I need to go to a, a, a larger city and try to pursue that? I didn't know what to do. I was confused. And so I took out a little sticky note and I write, wrote a, a quick thank you letter to God. It said, God, I thank you for every moment that has led to this one. Well, in, in the few months following me expressing that gratitude to God, I was promoted to the morning show, I earned my very first Emmy Award, and I met my husband. Planting that seed of gratitude unlocks so much in our lives, and it's especially important that we plant those kinds of seeds, especially when we're facing rejection. And, and as I close today, I, I just want to remind you that a closed door is also a gateway to your destiny. 
in those moments of rejection, of despair, of confusion, take a deep breath. Remember those tools that I'm sharing with you today, the three ways that you can thrive in rejection, understanding that God has a plan for your life, use your waiting time wisely, and express gratitude. Jesus. Jesus.